Good morning, everyone. Um, hope you're all doing well this morning. Um, I will continue us on our series of the Book of Ruth this morning, and yeah, I think we're just going to start by praying um, and welcoming the Holy Spirit here this morning. Yeah, Lord, we just thank you so much that you love to meet with us. Thank you that we can come with all our business and all our excesses and we can bring them to you and you give us so much more in return. We just pray that you will settle our hearts now to hear from you and all that you have in store for us this morning. And we just pray, Holy Spirit, that you come and do all you know how to do best and yeah, transform our hearts by your word this morning. We pray in Jesus' name. So we've been looking at the book of Ruth so far in the series, which is incredible. I love the book of Ruth personally. And we know the story starts off really dull and gloomy. Um, a bit like the last two Thursdays really in Sheffield with all the rain and the fog and the thunderstorms, just really dark day. Um, and the story starts with farming and then a move to Moab, where it doesn't just stop there. It was meant to be a move to greener pastures but very quickly it led to distance and barrenness and finally death. It seemed that Naomi was not just having a bad day, um, but she was having a terrible few years really. And as a result, she self-proclaimed herself as bitter because it looked as though the hand of God had gone against her. So in our story in the book of Ruth, we have Naomi who is the mother um, and we've got Ruth who is the daughter-in-law and Ruth was married to one of Naomi's two sons who died alongside her husband. And so at this point in the story, they've made their way into Jerusalem, back to Jerusalem with God leading them. And um, so we'll pick up the story um, a bit later on. Um, but this feeling that Naomi had right at the beginning is a feeling I think some of us are familiar with. Um, that feeling of despair and as though God has gone against us. Um, it is one that I experienced a couple of years ago. Um, and um, in 2020, <laughs> which was the year of, of, of dawn and gloom for many people, um, and for myself as well, two years before that, I've been preparing to go to Beirut uh, with a team uh, to the Middle East to um, support um, a church planting a mission there. And um, 2020 brought a lot of challenges um, with that. And part of that was um, those plans changed, in essence, <laughs> due to the pandemic to start off with, and very quickly followed by an explosion in the city. And this was really hard for me to get my head around because it had taken two years of preparing to go, two years of telling everyone, two years of planning my work schedules so that it allowed for that, two years of preparing my family that I was gonna be so many miles away, and two years of preparing my own heart, actually, to leave friends and family. And so it, it was a time that was really hard but what God showed in that time was that he was faithful because he spoke a lot to me in that time, um, both personally to me and through friends and family around me. And one of the things that he reminded me during this time was that uh, his invitation is adventure with him, not on my own. And that is not about the destination of where we're going, but about the journey that he takes us on, a journey of transformation and renewal. And I'm so glad that that journey brought me here to Sheffield because there's been so much growth and so much change in me. And I just don't know that I could have written it a better way, really. And there's still moments where I am pushed to feel alone and think that God may be far. But what I've learned through this experience and many things is that I am never alone and that God is so near. And I know that God is still writing my story as well as many others in this room. And I can't wait to see how it unfolds in your lives and my life. And thankfully, the story of Ruth, it doesn't leave us in suspense like our lives does. Um, we're not allowed to wait too long before we see that God quickly returns, um, returns Naomi home. He stops the farming and blesses his people. And what seemed like the end quickly 
was the beginning of the story. And God has also blessed Naomi with this wonderful and devoted, loving daughter-in-law, Ruth. And so in this chapter, we'll begin to see how Naomi starts recognizing that God's hand really was on her life, as he is on every one of us here today. So we'll be re reading from Ruth chapter 2, verse 14 to 23. And at mealtime, Boaz said to her, Come here and eat some bread, and dip your morsel in wine. So she sat beside the reapers, and he passed to her the roasted grain. And she ate until she was satisfied, and had some left over. When she rose to glean, Boaz instructed his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and do not, do not reproach her. And also pull out some from the bundles for her, and leave it for her to glean, and do not rebuke her. So she gleaned in the field until evening. Then she beat her watch again, and it was almost, it was about an effort of barley. And she took it up and went into the city. Her mother-in-law saw that she had what she had gained. She also brought out and gave her what food she had left over after being satisfied. And her mother-in-law said to her, Where did you glean today? And where have you worked? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. So she, so she told her mother-in-law with whom she had worked and said, The man's name with whom I worked today was Boaz. And Naomi, and Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, May he be blessed by the kindness of the, by the Lord, whose kindness has not forsaken the living or the dead. Naomi also said to her, This man is a close relative of ours, one of our redeemers. And Ruth the Moabite said, Besides, he said to me, You shall keep close to my young men until they have finished all my harvest. And Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that you go out with these young women, lest in any other field you be assaulted. So she kept close to the young women of Boaz, gleaning until the end of the barley and wheat harvest and lived with her mother-in-law. So this morning we'll be exploring the theme of kindness. And it is one that runs through the entire story of Ruth. And as we read this morning, Ruth shows Naomi kindness in going with her to Jerusalem. And Boaz shows Ruth and Naomi kindness in this story. But ultimately, God showed his kindness to Naomi, Ruth, and Boaz, and the whole lineage, and thereby the whole entire world. So through the story, we see that human kindness always reflects the kindness of God to us. So firstly, we're going to look at the kindness of Boaz. He starts the passage saying, come and eat. Boaz's invitation is spoken in kindness to an outcast, inviting her to sit at his table and be fed. Boaz not only grants Ruth the freedom to gain, but also welcomes her into his workforce, giving her honor and dignity. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are grafted into his family. We are not just made the help or an assistant on the side, eating leftovers, but we get to sit at the table as co-heirs with Christ. And what an incredible honor we are showed as sinners. Tori Merida says, Boaz took an ordinary event and transformed it into an occasion for compassion, generosity, and acceptance. Again, demonstrated the kindness of God. And in the same way, we are also to do this to people around us, um, the poor and the needy around us. They don't just need our stuff. Um, those things are important and we can give. Um, but what they really need from us is a sense of dignity and friendship. It is incredible to see how Boaz treats this foreigner and accepts her into his workforce. He did not just set an unattainable standard and qualifications for our entry. It's a simple come and eat. When we allow our hearts to be stirred by compassion for people around us and foreigners and those in need, we are extending God's kindness to them also. We can be the gracious hand of God to those in desperate need of him. 
and in his letter to the Corinthians, Paul begs us to keep our hearts in the right place, for the heart regulates the hand. This isn't, this isn't so that others can take it easy while we sweat it out. No, it is so that we can go shoulder to shoulder with them all the way. And our surplus matches their deficit, and their surplus matches our deficit. Something else that we learn from Boaz in this story is his style of leadership. And although he was quite a wealthy boss, and uh, he could have done anything with his time really, what he did, chose to do was aid with his workers. And we learn about his character and attitude here. He didn't just ask her to find something to eat when he invited Ruth. He showed her what to eat. He was the best host ever, really. He served her personally. And he reminds us so much of our God who loves to lead, lead us personally. He doesn't love us from afar or lead us from afar, but he comes personally to us. He gives us our daily bread and prepares a table before us. And he showed the ultimate service by serving us with his body on the cross. These verses, they point to a providence beyond what is just needed. Because Boaz went above the letter of the law, he showed compassion by allowing Ruth to glean among the sheaves. And in those times, what, he, he was expect, what was expected of him really was for him to allow her to just graze the edges, but he invited her right into the field to get the best grain. And this is not the first time we witnessed Boaz's generosity. The essence of the law at that time was to be understood within the covenant relationship between God and his people. So Boaz really grasped what the letter of the law was about and his actions revealed something of the character of God which Christ revealed for, fulfilled for us on the cross. And we quickly see Naomi's response as well. She used thanksgiving as a response to that kindness. And that kindness in this passage is translated kind. Uh, that um, kindness in this passage is actually um, reveals a love and covenant relationship between people. It embodies the warmth of loyal love. It is a love that can be faithfully relied upon and is committed. And throughout the Old Testament, we see God constantly teaches people about loyal commitment to them. He was loyally committed to them right through the wilderness into the promised land. And in the New Testament, and true for us today, is the fulfillment of God's promise by sending his son into the world to die on the cross for us. The cross is the ultimate picture of the generous providence of God. Not just in removing our sins and cleansing us, but restoring us to dignity and fullness through our adoption into his family. When we moved to the UK um, in 2005, which is such a long time ago now, uh, we moved to Portsmouth, which is all the way down south, the other end of the country really. And um, we were introduced very quickly to a family friend now called Nana Joyce. And actually we were introduced to her as Nana Joyce. And she was just incredible. From the moment we met her, she showed us so much kindness. She brought us in. And I remember at the time my mom was still completing her PhD and so she would come on Saturdays and took us out. She would take us to the park, she would take us out of the city. And many of my love for exploring different places came from her now. And she would take us and she would give us pocket money for the week. And Christmas day we always had to go to her place. She would prepare a meal for us, we would sit down and we would eat with her. And in essence we became her family. And the best part of that story was that she didn't just invite us into her space and invite us to our church. Um, she came to our church because she knew how important it is to immerse ourselves into people's lives rather than try to get them out of their lives to come to us. And she really demonstrated God's kindness to us right from the beginning of our time in the UK. And she's someone that we remember very fondly now. And um, yeah, and she really, when I think about the kindness of family, she really demonstrates that for me. And for us as a church family, the challenge is the same. 
because in the weeks to come, we're going to see the um, economic crisis, crisis worsen. And we can't just sit in our homes and give away. And we can't just tell people to move on with their lives or just do better. We have got to take opportunities that come to really invest in people's lives, to show them dignity even when they differ from us, even when they might not share the social class with us. And there are many in the city who will face a really hard time because of their social status and different priorities of the government which hinder the just distributions of resources to them. We have to show God's love and justice and compassion to them. Because even though we might not have plenty ourselves, we believe and serve a God who is greater and stronger and higher than any other power and authority in the world. And he will graciously supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. And as Dave mentioned, we will be raising some money in a couple of weeks. We'll be doing a gift offering. And it's a good time to begin to think about how we can really extend dignity and love to people around us in this city. And so, we, when we look at Ruth's kindness next to her mother-in-law, she was kind in the way she obeyed her mother-in-law. She was very far from her own family and friends, but still she was committed loyally to her mother-in-law. She went out to find food, and she did not grumble or drag her feet, but she worked hard and diligently, and this was the thing that Boaz noticed when he saw her in the field. And when she was offered food through the kindness of Boaz, she did not just eat her fill, but she took some away to Naomi. She returned with the bounty of what she had gathered, and she continues, even in the story, to show her mother-in-law the same generosity that Boaz showed her. And this must have been a bit of a challenge for her, really, because Naomi was bitter. She told everyone she came in contact with that she was bitter, that God's hand had gone against her. And that must have been a challenge living with someone like that. And you might be like this Boaz in this story. You might be living comfortable and in a harvest season at the moment. And God's desire is that when we hear his word, that we are stepped to action. So our response in this story should not just be, oh, that's cute. Um, but we should be taking actions as to God, what do you want me to do next with this? Or you might be like Ruth, and you might be living and working with difficult people, or people who just you walk into the room and you can sense the sadness and the despair on them. And a, a lot of the time that weighs us down as well, and you can almost feel your joy begin to live. But we are called to be light into every situation we walk into. And so we carry the joy and the light of the presence of God with us. And the challenge might actually be quite draining, both mentally and physically, for those of us who work with those kind of people. And the temptation really is to reject them or keep them at arm's length. But they are just as deserving of the mercy and grace of God, just like any of us here today. And we have got to do better leaning into God's compassion for those around us. And one of our, family, our values as a church family is generosity. And this is something that we do so well already. It is why it's one of our values, because we do generosity well. But there is so much room for growth. And we can show more of the character of God and his covenant grace to others around us. So do you have people like Naomi in your life today? People who maybe are bitter or um, they might be difficult to relate to. How are you gonna choose to love them? And is there a way that you can show generosity to them this week? The kindness of God is so evident throughout this whole story. The story and the life of Ruth and Naomi, they reveal the sovereignty of God and his providence. Providence is the general name we give the, um, theologically to God's present activity in this world. And this is seen in a general sense of God sustaining and maintaining and ruling in this world. But more specifically for Ruth in the story, it is God's evidence and activity in individual lives. Because God's providence is not for the big stuff and he does big and great things for us, but it is actually his presence 
and his hand on each and every one of us. And now Naomi could have chosen not to see it as that, really. She could have looked at what Boaz did and thought, oh, he's a really kind man, or we are so lucky to have fallen into the hands of a kind person. Or she could have actually been overwhelmed by the pain that she couldn't appreciate the goodness of God in her life at that time. And even the man that did a little bit of pride in her because she might have felt a little bit self-justified that, you know, I am one of God's people. Why has this befallen me? And surely it was a time to receive God's goodness. But instead, we see her humble assessment of the situation as an extension of God's hand through Boaz to bless her. She was able to recognize that even though Boaz was leaning in compassion to her, it was God that was showing her kindness. And despite all she had suffered, she saw in all her circumstances the gracious hand of God to save, provide for, and rescue her, giving her hope and a future. God's kindness to Naomi was in healing her heart of despair. It did this first and renewed her trust and hope in him before he changed the situation. And that is the God we serve because really he's so close to us and his desire is to love us first. And sometimes we want the situations around us to change so dramatically and drastically. But God is so kind because if our situation changes and our hearts are not changed, we cannot appreciate him for his goodness in our situation. And so he starts first with our hearts. And so Naomi at this point, she praises God because that situation hadn't changed much, but she revealed and received a new revelation of who God was. A revelation of his kindness, of his good plans to give a hope and a future. And here we see Naomi's personal revival. In it, our, our view of the Almighty God is restored. When we allow God to change and transform our hearts, we receive a revelation of his character and who he is to us. And our view of God changes. So when our view of God changes, then everything around us changes. We walk out with confidence and with boldness because we know that everything we do and everywhere we step, God is with us and he is for us. And in this passage that we read today, it is the first time we see the word guardian, redeemer used. And it is mentioned another eight times in the following chapters which we'll be looking at in the coming weeks. And I think this gives us the impression that it is really important. So if you take nothing away from the series of Ruth, remember the word guardian retreat, redeemer, because it is that that God is for us. And in the old times, the guardian redeemer was a close family relative. Their duty under the Mosaic law were to redeem and to buy back. If a relative had lost land, it was their duty to buy that back. If they're falling on hard times, times, they were to go and rescue them. If someone had been enslaved, it was their job to avenge the relatives' murder or to retrieve them back from slavery. And also, if someone had died, it was their job to provide an heir for the person who had died. And so the responsibility of a guardian redeemer called for a sacrifice. The person who performed these duties voluntarily diminished their own inheritance for the sake of another. One of the biggest things in Ruth is redemption. And redemption is bound to kindness and is at the heart of the story. We see redeem, redemption, redeemer all throughout the book of Ruth. It appears actually over 23 times throughout the whole book. And the comparisons of what Boaz did for Naomi is what, God, is, God, is what God does for us through Christ. The kindness of God in the cross is the gospel message that we can share with people around us. And as a church family, we have chosen the three circles as a quick tool, really, in sharing the gospel to people around us. It's one that we've heard around, and in our midweek groups, it's one that we have looked at several times, and this is just a quick tool to help us build our confidence and courage to share the gospel quickly. Um, with people around us. So what is it? Um, we live in a broken world and this came into the world, brokenness entered the world as a result of sin. But this is far from God's original design. God's design was for intimacy and relationship with him. 
But what sin and brokenness has done is separate us from God. And Jesus came to restore a broken world to the original design. He delivered us from the slavery to things that we use to try and satisfy us. And sometimes these things actually loop us in the round of self-condemnation and um, just insecurity. But Jesus avenges and brings justice in the release of captives and in the destruction of the devil's hold through the victory over death. When he died on the cross, he won the victory over death. And through his resurrection, he can now be restored back to God's original design. His death and resurrection on the cross, Jesus completed our adoption into God's family. And when he ascended to heaven, he sent us the promised Holy Spirit as a seal to affirm that the work has been completed. So this is not something we have to work for or we have to strive for. We don't have to pretend or try to be something that we are not because we have been called and adopted into family. So we are heirs with Christ. We are brothers and sisters with Christ. And when we surrender and receive Christ into our lives, we can show faith as we present ourselves to be redeemed. And if you're here this morning and you've not received Christ into your heart, um, now is be no better time like now, really. God is always waiting, waiting for us to receive him. And if you're even maybe here, you've received him before and you're just feeling far from God, he is not far from you. He is not against you. His hand is not far removed from you. He is waiting to welcome you in. You are part of his family. God is the guardian and redeemer of all his people. And throughout the Old Testament, he sinned voluntarily, redeeming and restoring Israel. So the word redeemer finds its ultimate fulfillment in the Messiah, Jesus Christ. In the New Testament, this concept is reflected in the various words for redeem. A word that means paying a ransom, buying back, saving from a loss. The redemption we receive through Christ leads us into intimacy relationship and family. So I don't know where you are this morning. You might be feeling overwhelmed by the things that are going on in your life to even notice God's gracious hand reaching for you. And I just wonder what would receiving God's kindness and goodness look like for you this morning. You might need healing. You might need forgiveness. You might need guidance or control or comfort, or you might actually just need rest. How are you going to choose to receive God's kindness this morning? Um, we are going to um, have a time of response now, and we are going to take communion together. And this is something we do as part of God's family, because Jesus has died for us. And his death on the cross means that we can now share in his body and in the blood of Christ. And even as we take communion together this morning, um, we can enjoy being part of God's family and what that means for us. And maybe if you can turn to people around you and you can just share what you feel receiving God's kindness looks like for you this morning. In leaning into God's compassion for others, sometimes we first have to recognize his compassion and kindness for us. <laughs>